Hmm, that wasn't right. One second. One second. Hello, hello! Welcome to the stream. David Snowpack here from Snowpack Games. It has been crazy long since I have streamed. I think I only managed to do one stream in February, although February is a short month, longer this year than, than most years, because leap year. But anyway, I am back. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, <laughs> hey, Ricardo, how's it going? We're both, we're both orcs. This is an orc-based stream, so far at least. Uh, how's it, how, how, how's, how's it doing? How's it going? How are you doing? Both of those work separately, but not as well together. <laughs> how's it going? Um, I have been... Uh, all over the place. I was in Disney World uh, for a week with my family doing, I don't know, Disney things. It was exhausting. It was fun, but exhausting. Um, oh, I just noticed that like our faces are like see-through because we're green and that it works on a green screen. That's kind of unfortunate for the orcs. I should maybe pick a different, like, is there a color we're not really using in the characters? By the way, for anyone who's watching this potentially for the first time, the, the characters on the screen thing is a Godot uh, game. Still in Godot 3. One of these days, I guess I should probably port it to Godot 4. Uh, but we made it on stream a couple years ago now at this point. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do we use much blue? I guess this, this, this axe here has some, uh, some blue in it, kind of like a tealish color. Maybe red, a red screen. Although, no, there's some red in this orc's mouth. Man, it's hard to pick a chroma key. I, yeah, I mean, I did. I did. I, I guess I would say more that I've recovered from my time off more than anything else. Um, but yeah, it was fun. Um, I'm looking forward to, to things being sort of normal for a couple weeks until GDC. GDC is already happening in like a minute. I think it's like two weeks away at now. Um, when is GDC? I know that the, uh, the Godot booth at GDC is already under construction. I, I was shown some pictures of the people who are constructing the Godot booth at GDC. It's already going up as we speak. Yeah, man. So, uh, 17 days away. I, of course, will be going before that because there's like a flight and things. So I think I'm flying on maybe the 16th. So like 15 days away, basically two weeks until GDC happens. Uh, if anyone else is coming to GDC, let me know. It'd be super cool to meet up. Although probably I would see you anyway if you came to the Godot booth because I will be spending at least some of that time uh, working the Godot booth and chatting with people and spreading the word of Godot. That sounds strangely religious. I didn't mean for it to. But you know, uh, it was interesting at GDC last year uh, most of the people I talked to had never heard of Godot, which is really interesting. You know, we were uh, in the same sort of zone as the Unreal and I think the Unity booth too, although I don't remember looking at the Unity booth. I definitely looked at the Unreal booth. I didn't go in there and visit. I just didn't have any time with manning the booth and all of the other things going on at, at GDC. But uh, yeah, it was really interesting. I would say probably a slight majority of the people that I talked to didn't know what Godot was. And so telling them, you know, for the first time, here's what Godot is and it's open source and all this kind of stuff. It was very interesting. Um, I think this year, probably more people will know what Godot is than, than last year. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, for this stream, uh, I had a plan. I had an original plan. Uh, that we were going to go through the backlog of issues and PRs that I had to review um, and and try and look at and fix or whatever, you know, depending on whether if that was an issue with a bug report or a, a PR to review and, and give some feedback. Um, but uh, I guess I'm throwing that plan out the window uh, because uh, it, there was a thing mentioned in an issue that I think it probably makes sense to work on. Let me let me get it up. Um, There's an issue that uh, a thousand ships uh, is working on to add 
uh, methods to or add methods to get argument count of methods. The double use of methods there is is confusing, but a, a way to get the argument count of a uh, callable, I guess, is the idea, right? That there's like you 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 get the callable uh, for a method and then get the argument count. I think that's generally the idea. Or I guess so class db having the ability to get the argument count. Okay, so I guess that's step A. Uh, da -da -da, yeah, portion of this is being able to ask GD extension methods to get the argument count. But I think ultimately the interface that users are going to be using is uncallable. Um, yeah, so then you can take a callable and say get argument count and get um, the count of the arguments. Oh my gosh. Some spam. Let's block this this spammer here. I think I can kill their character too. Yeah, we don't need you. No spam here. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, maybe I should go even further back here. So GD extension is this great technology for Godot that lets you uh, make extensions to the engine from other programming languages, such as C++ or Rust or Python or whatever, uh, allowing you to either extend the engine to do something new that it couldn't do before, or just like program your game in GD extension. Uh, and I'm one of the maintainers of GD extension. So uh, my plan was that on this stream, we would work on doing some maintainery stuff, like fixing issues and whatnot. But then uh, this issue uh, to get the argument count of methods, uh, I was pinged on it up here. Um, I guess the the GD extension changes here require us to add a new struct to the GD extension interface um, in order to like store this new data. We have been slowly pro proliferating a lot more of these structs, um, which is kind of messy. Like these, because we we make a new struct and then we deprecate the old struct and then you know we're just accumulating these structs in the interface. And when we get to Godot five, we can throw out all of the old structs and. Uh, start over and just have the the new versions. Uh, but you know, every version we seem to be adding a couple more of these. And the thinking here was, well, this one's going to require creating a new struct. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I would really consider holding off until we can pack more into this. Otherwise, we'll end up with GD extension script interface info seven soon. Right now, we're we're only going to take it to three. But still, like, it kind of sucks adding all these uh, these extra structs. So. Um, I also have a change, which I stated here a month ago. I have an unrelated change that I'd like to make to this same struct. And now uh, when I got pinged earlier, Remy was saying like, okay, let's hold off on this change until we can get dsnowpack. That's me, uh, until we get dsnowpack's change. Um, so I feel like I should probably work on that uh, since I'm holding up uh, the work that a thousand ships is doing. Um, I don't want to do that. I don't want to hold up other people's work. I want I want the code to keep flowing. The spice must flow. Um, so yeah, I think that's what we're going to work on, at least at first. It might go really, really fast, and then we can work on some other stuff, and we can dig back into my big backlog of, of PRs and, and issues and stuff. Does that sound good? Does that sound like it'd be a good stream? Let me know. If not, I mean, we can do something else. I don't mind. I'm just here to, to hang out with you guys and code some things. So like, we can work on that. Or we could, I don't know, work on some some VR stuff, or I don't know, we could work on anything. That's just my idea. That's just my idea. If you guys have better ideas, let me know. <laughs> but until I hear anything, oh, Ricardo says it sounds good. All right, <laughs> until I hear any any better ideas, uh, I'm I'm gonna uh, just go down this path. So we're gonna need a new branch. Um, oh, I should talk about the change I want to make. I told you all about a thousand ships uh, change, but I didn't talk about mine. Um, so some months ago, quite a long time ago, actually, I was working on adding a scripting language to uh, via GD extension in order to better understand the scripting API. Because uh, at the time, it seems to have kind of calmed down now, but uh, at the time, there were a lot of people working on scripting languages uh, to add to Godot via GD extension, and they were reporting bugs and stuff. And I was just looking at their 
uh, reports and PRs and like, I don't know what this is even supposed to do. I don't understand how this works. So my, my thinking was I would, I would add a scripting language myself so I could get to understand the APIs better. Uh, and, and it was a really good exercise and I had a lot of fun and I wish I had more time to work on that project. I was adding, um, uh, what was it called? It was, ah, I think gravity script. Yeah. Gravity script. So I found some random scripting language. Um, I don't know if the language is good or anything, uh, but it, it's it's very easy to embed, and no one had done it before. Uh, so I found the scripting language Gravity Script and decided I was going to integrate it with Godot and uh, set off doing that. Um, and I did find some rough edges in the uh, GD extension API for adding scripting languages. Uh, one in particular, it seems like every extension that makes a scripting language has to work around. Um, and I ended up using a hack that I stole from the uh, the Luau binding. So that's adding support for the Luau scripting language uh, to Godot. Hmm. I used to... Brave used to remember where this was. Okay, we'll search for it. Godot. Luau. Anyway, the, the Luau bindings uh, for Godot are actually really nice. Um, I mean, I've never used them, but I've, I look at their code a lot, um, and I, I think the the code that they wrote to integrate Luau with uh, uh, Godot is probably the best documentation there is for uh, how to add a scripting language, uh, which is sort of sad. We need more documentation. We need to document this stuff better. But uh, they had a hack around this issue, uh, which let me try and remember exactly what the issue was. It's so long since I worked on this. Um, okay, so free method list. Uh, da, da, da. Hey, Daniel Miller! <laughs> was Luau Lang invented in Hawaii? I hope so. That would be awesome. Um, it's so that the Luau is a variant of Lua, and uh, I guess they just modified it to 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 have another letter and make it be another word. <laughs> um, yeah, it is Luau. Uh, it's a ver It's a Roblox's, I think, variant of Lua. Um, yeah, it's like an alternate, so Luau is a fast, small, safe, gradually typed embeddable scripting language derived from Lua. It's designed to be backwards compatible with Lua 5.1 as well as incorporating some features from future Lua releases. But I think it's Roblox, right? Am I remembering that right? Yeah. Um, or maybe Roblox just chose to use it? For some reason, I had thought that Roblox was involved in creating it, but I might be wrong about that. Roblox chose to open... Oh, no, it is from Roblox. Roblox chose to open source Luau to foster collaboration between the Roblox community as well as Luau and other companies, blah, 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 blah. Um, so I think, yeah, it's a rewritten interpreter to be faster, I guess. <laughs> it was invented in the Roblox version of Hawaii. Perfect. How much Robux did it cost to... Anyway. Um, uh, so back to the actual problem that we're fixing. Um, so there is in the script interface uh, a thing where uh, Godot is asking your GD extension for the list of methods. Let me see. I think it's on script language or script instance possibly oh man i should have refreshed my memory about this before i started the stream but i did not uh this was a sort of last minute change i looked through like uh, the issues that i was planning to to work on uh, on the stream but since i totally threw that plan out um okay so i made this thing uh this class to sort of wrap what GD extension script instance info is doing and it was free method list okay so we have this function where uh godot is saying i've got an instance of an object from your scripting language give me a list of its methods you allocate this list and return it to godot and then later on godot will say okay i'm done with that please free it the thing is um, when it gives you the list to free, it doesn't tell you how many items are on the list. 
it doesn't give you a place to store the number of items on the list. So if you had to allocate any memory in order to produce this list, you can no longer loop through the list and free that memory. Um, you could free the list itself, but not any memory you allocated on the inside because you don't know how many elements there are. So uh, Luau did this trick to embed the count in there, uh, which I'm going to attempt to find because it's clever, but also horrible. It's horrible. It's a horrible hack. Um, <laughs> and sandbox, <laughs> using sand for the beaches. <laughs> You are rocking that metaphor, Ricardo. You are you are milking that thing for all that it's worth. <laughs> um, geez, and it's been a while since I've been in this code either. Uh, so I know they have their own version of script instance somewhere. Let's go look in script and see if here they have the script instances. Luau, Luau script instance. Where is that actually defined, though? I should really open this up in VS Code because it would be so much easier to find stuff. Do we have the same issue with property lists? I should look into that because it seems like it's a similar situation that we return a property. Or maybe maybe it's because we don't have to allocate memory on the property lists because property lists are inherently simpler. But anyway, here we're getting close to the we're getting close to the place here. Um, so let's maybe look in here. Get method list. Um, yeah, so I guess they buried it in in this template here. Alloc with len. Let's find that. Alloc with len. Where are you defined? Uh, should open up some VS Code. Let me see if I already have the code somewhere. Then it'll be easy enough, uh, although I guess we can check it out from Git anyway. It's no big deal. Um, sorry, it's always confusing because I have like multiple screens and I have VS Code set up to like always open on one of the screens, but it's not the screen I'm sharing with you guys, so it just makes it confusing to, to open new screens or open new instances of VS Code, I guess I should say. Uh, let's look for Luau. I do have it. And let's search for alloc with len. There we go. See? VS Code found it instantaneously. So what they do is they come up with the size of the list, they add an integer size to it, allocate it, then they put at the, is this the start of the list? Yes, I guess the first four bytes of the list, an integer, they embed the size, and then they return the pointer moved forward those four bytes. So they know that at the beginning of this pointer, or before this pointer that they're returning a no, uh, it has this, this hidden size, uh, but nobody else does. Uh, it also makes it interesting when they deallocate it, they're going to have to subtract those four bytes from the pointer again in order to free it. Um, I imagine that's what this free with len does. Yep, it has to subtract the uh, the one integer size from the pointer in order to free it. Otherwise, you know, you'd get a crash about trying to free um, memory that was never allocated in the first place. So anyway, this is a mess. Um, we should have Godot actually tell us how many items are in this list because we had to tell Godot how many items were in the list when we gave it to it originally. It could just give that back to us. It, it all happens in the same method on Godot's side, I think. Um, let's actually go look at the Godot code in question here. This would be um, in, uh, I think, script language extension. And we need to find the script instance extension class. Is it script instance ext Oh, no, it is an extension class. Jeez, how is this done? Um, Language extension. Maybe it does have a. Oh no, here it is. Whatever this is. Okay, it is called script instance extension. All right. For some reason, I thought it wouldn't be called that, but that's gibberish. Uh, script instance extension. 
Uh, so on Godot's side, we do get method list. Yep. So in in okay, Godot's uh script API has this get method list, which then calls into the GD extension, which um you know calls get uh method list func, uh which returns the count as a uh you know or an out variable. Um, loops over that data, does something with it, and then immediately calls to free it. And if we just also passed the count in here, nobody would have to do this hack that presently everybody has to do. Um, or at least, or maybe they just leak memory. <laughs> Is this approach of hiding data behind the pointer just asking for a memory leak? That seems dangerous, but I'm not familiar with C++, raw pointer, hygiene. So. I don't think it's at a, any bigger risk of causing a memory leak than anything else, honestly. But it, it is a hack, and it is weird, and we should not be requiring every single GD extension that adds a scripting language to do this like messy, weird hack. Especially um, if the binding isn't one that lets you play with memory as freely as uh, C++ does. Although there's other possible solutions here, too. I can think of a couple. Um, you could, uh, you know, just allocate that chunk of memory and return it without doing any pointer shenanigans, but then also keep a separate hash map that's keyed on the uh, pointer that you returned and has the the count, right? That would be another way to do the same thing. That would be sort of less hacky, but definitely slower because every time you go to free this memory, you're doing this hash map lookup, um, which might not be a big deal but it just seems silly like the whole thing seems silly when we have the count here uh, all we need to do is pass it into this method and then everybody's lives is easier and i just noticed too that we have a similar set of functions for property list uh but i don't have this problem with property list i'm not sure why um i wonder though if it would make sense if we're going to modify the get method list stuff to have a count that maybe we shouldn't do the same thing for property list because it also comes down to you know free property list func and it has a count and we could give it a count um, let me go look at the code in my gravity script stuff and see why we don't have this problem with property lists my go-to would be to keep a dictionary hash yeah um yeah which i mean would totally work uh the thing is like yeah i don't i don't know I don't know how often this is called or how many things might be in progress at a time. Probably very little is in progress at the same time. So this hash map would probably have a very small number of elements. Um, but yeah, it's still still not ideal. Uh, okay, so get property list, get property list. Uh, not this one though, I want this one. This one's going to do the actual work. It's doing nothing. OK, my, my gravity script is so undeveloped that get property list actually just returns nothing. Um, so maybe the problem exists there, and I just didn't notice it yet. Let's look at what Luau does, since they are like a full, complete binding here. Uh, get property list. Hmm. So this is the one that allocates it. Does this do any of the shenanigans? Let's see how this is allocated. Let's search for the word alloc. Alloc with len. Are they doing the shenanigans here too? They're doing the shenanigans here too. Interesting. So maybe both of these, maybe both of these should uh, have a count. I'm glad that I took a look at this. So when I go back to, oh, I'm totally lost now. Totally lost now. Um, so alloc with len. Let's look for free with len. So method list definitely uses it. Property list definitely uses it too. 
Oh yeah. Okay. So they they do have to loop over the each property in the property list and free uh, some memory individually there too. Okay. So both places should use it. In fact, uh, let's take a look at the GD extension interface and try and comb around and see if there's other places that need this as well. So what we want to look at is the script instance info to struct. And this is all of uh, the function pointers that your GD extension provides to Godot to allow it to um, interact with your script instance, an instance of a, of a class created by your script. Um, and let's look at all of the different list kind of functions here. Let's look for list. Uh, get property list, free property list. All right, we identified that one. Get method list, free method list. All right, uh, that seems that seems to be everything that needs this. So let's um, let's get down to it. Hey, Logan, welcome to the stream. Doing some some GD extension Godot hacking here. Not the uh, not the lightest topic for a Friday morning. For those for whom it is morning. For me, it's morning. I need more coffee. That's what I need. Uh, all right. So we're going to need to make a new version of get method list, free method list, get property list, free property list. So let's find the uh, first Come on, VS Code. Why are you being so slow? All right. We'll do it the old-fashioned way. We'll just text search for it. Um, so we need to make new versions of these ones. Should I put them here or should I put them down by the new one? Well, for now, let's just plop them here. Um, and then the other one is free method list. Yeah, maybe I'll just put them by the old ones. Let's let's look for some older examples of this. Um, we've certainly done this before. Where did we put the, the new ones? So there was notification two. Oh, and it looks like we just put that immediately after. Okay, so let's do that here then as well. So we'll put get property list. Or wait, we don't need the get property list to change, actually. We just need the free property list to change. So free property list two and uint 32t p count to match the um, the same value from earlier. It was returned via this, this out parameter. Um, and so we're going to pass it back in here. And let's put some comments similar to this one. To try and keep things consistent. I spent a lot of time agonizing over making the new code that I write uh, match the same like style and placement and all of that stuff as the existing code, just so that the file as a whole uh, is vaguely consistent. I don't know if that's really as important as I as I uh, make it out to be in my head, but it's just. The way my brain wants to work, I want everything to be neat and tidy. Actually, let's do turn on line wrapping here. Uh, GD extension script instance free property list two instead, and I put it on the wrong one. There, let's put it on here. Okay, and then the other one is free method list. This is the one that I actually had encountered the problem personally uh, with. We don't need this. Wait, what did I delete the one that I added already? Okay, when we look at the, the diff later, we'll make sure that I didn't do anything weird, add any extra lines. Use GD extension script instance free method list two. And I put it on the wrong one again. Ah. 
But yeah, I Godot 4.3 guys is gonna be amazing. There's so much cool stuff coming in Godot 4.3. Right now, Masters is, is pretty unstable uh, because everyone just rushed in all their features. We had kind of we had one of the feature freezes uh, last week Friday, um, so things are a little bit buggy in Master presently. But there's so much cool stuff. Uh, there's just tons of reorganization of uh, XR stuff. Um, there's, uh, the hand tracking data got reorganized. There's now face tracking and body tracking. Um, there's Wayland support. Uh, geez, I'm like blanking on like all of the things, but there's a ton of stuff. Anyway, it's going to be great. Oh, like rendering wise, there's just a ton, a ton of things like, uh, Dario's or Dario's, I, 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 I just try not to mispronounce his name. Dario's uh, acyclic, acyclic render graph stuff, uh, which is really cool. Um, in the compatibility renderer in the OpenGL, we're getting light maps and MSAA, which are going to be huge for uh, standalone VR. Um, yeah, loads of things happening in rendering, more than I'm even aware of, because that's just kind of not my area. But it, it's gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. There's a ton of good GD extension stuff coming in 4.3. I mean, this thing we're working on here is super minor. It's just like a little a little fix uh, in the extension interface. But we're getting runtime classes, formerly known as gameplay classes. I think we even worked on that on stream a bunch. Uh, but that's being able to have classes that kind of act like non-tool classes. One of the big complaints with GD extension, uh, especially from people who use GD native back in Godot 3, was that um, all my classes run in the editor. How do I make that stop? And they didn't want to have to uh, put, you know, if engine singleton is editor hint around all of their codes so that it wouldn't do weird things in the editor. Now you can just say, uh, these classes are runtime classes. They'll only uh, run in the game, same as non-tool like GD script classes. We also added, um, virtual methods that you can define from your GD extension and then can be implemented in uh, GD script. So yeah, so much cool stuff. So much cool stuff is coming in Godot 4.3. All right, so we added the new function pointer types. Uh, yeah, that looks good. Now we need to make the new struct. So here we have GD extension script instance info two, and we need to make a GD extension script instance info three. Which means we need to add the deprecated comments. Actually, some of this stuff um, is probably already done in uh, a thousand ships PR. I maybe could have copied um, a little bit of this, and it's going to be interesting when we get around to merging that stuff because there's going to be a merge conflict of I'm going to be creating this new uh, version three struct, and she's going to be creating it as well. But we'll work that out one way or another. Uh, okay, free method list two. And free property list two. Um, is it okay that we only have the one version on there now? Yes, I think it is. Yeah, so for some of these changes, we have to retain both function pointers because they work differently enough that um, you can't like derive the behavior of one from the other. But this case, I think we can. So we'll call, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll just like, if we have this version, we'll call it with the count. If uh, the GD extension is older and use, using the older struct for compatibility, we call it without the count and everything's, everything's fine. We're good. Um, and here we can remove this deprecated. Wait, how did I end up with that deprecated? I copied the wrong one, didn't I? God dang it. Okay, hang on. <laughs> I copied the version one instead of the version two, I think. Let me... 
Let me just redo this real quick. Okay, version three. And free property list two. And free method list two. And we have this deprecated message, which needs to go on the number two version. Okay. Oh, something else we should do before I forget to look. So um, Luau added this uh, alloc with um, len, the Luau bindings did. But uh, let's look for every place that that is used. Because I think we figured out that we got it in enough places on this struct, but I'm just curious if it's, if it's needed in other places. Oh, it says len. It actually looks like no. I think that covers everywhere that Luau is doing this hack. Beautiful. Or, oh yeah, okay, so this is the same thing. This is placeholder script instance. So uh, it's, it's the same uh, interface. Placeholder script instances are just a, another version of normal script instances. So we're good, I think. Okay. So we have the new struct. And then what we need to do is um, find where this struct gets registered. So uh, script instance info. Oh, we need a new function. We need a new registration function as well. So script instance info. So we have uh, script instance create using the original struct, script instance create two using the version two struct. And then now we need one for version three. Hang on. Placeholder instance create. Okay, yeah, we don't need to pass anything different here. Okay, yeah, I remember this one. My added this um, as an alternative to making your whole own like custom placeholder class. Uh, you can save yourself a lot of work. By doing uh, by using this this function that's in Godot four point two. All right, so four point three script instance create three, which takes um, the info three struct, and we need to move around the deprecated messages. So deprecated in four point two use script instance create three instead, and then we're going to deprecate this one. Deprecated in Godot 4.3, used script instance create three instead. So this is now the current one. Make sure everything is updated here. All right. So now we need to make this new registration function and modify this one probably. So is script instance create. All right. All right, so this is the version one one, which creates the version two one and adds some stuff to it. And the version two one how is this one just so much shorter than the other one? What's going on here? Script instance extension instance info native info. This is sort of confusing. I have to remember how this works. So this one creates a whole info two structure. This one doesn't need to because it just passes itself in here. So I think what it, this is going to end up looking like is that our new version will be able to be short like this. Um, and then this one, which needs to go into the disabled deprecated if defs here, because this is now going to be a deprecated function, and you can compile Godot to like not have the deprecated functions in it. Um, 
and this is going to need to be different. Also, yeah, lots of stuff needs to change. All right, let's figure this out. Script instance extension. Take me to your leader. Why is VS Code not letting me jump with the control? That sucks. See, it's thinking. It's doing a lot of thinking. Hmm. All right, well, I'm pretty sure it's in this file. Uh, OK, we need to get to the top of here. We need to get to our script instance extension class, uh, which is what ultimately takes this script language. Script instance extension. There we go. All right, so this is going to accept now the info three, which is going to hold the, and, and then we have this deprecated native info struct that holds um, the other pointers if we need them. So here we're going to need to put a uh, script instance free, come on, autocomplete. What is going on with VS Code, man? I would really love my usual autocomplete and stuff to be working. All right, all right. For the stream, of course, everything everything breaks just in time for the stream. Uh, okay, so we need to have, we need to hang on to uh, the old function pointer for when we're, we're getting the old struct from old GD extensions, because GD extension aims to be um, it, it, it aims to have GD extensions built for older versions of Godot work in new versions of Godot with binary compatibility. So the old versions of Godot won't know about our new uh, version of the struct. They'll still be passing in the old version of the struct. And so we need to have uh, some code paths for using the, the old data. So I'm just going to use this to get the name. So be free property list funk or whatever this is called normally. Let me go see what it's called normally. <laughs> uh, it's called free property list funk. Beautiful. And free method list funk. I'm just going to assume that that type name is the same, but with the word method in there, we'll find out. Uh, yeah, so we have the data we need. That's cool. Then back here, I have more of an idea of what we need to do. So we need to change this from doing info two to doing info three. Oh, VS Code. What the heck? I told it to rename that variable using the like uh, refactor tools stuff in uh, VS Code, but it's just like chugging away. I have no idea why VS Code is hating me right now. I may kill all the VS Codes and start over to just see if that helps. But it's just chugging. It's just chugging. All right. Goodbye, VS Code. Goodbye. Goodbye. Another VS Code over here. That should be all of them. Um, let's make some of them again. All right. The moment of truth. Can I control click this struct? <gasps> I can. Can I rename this variable info3? Yay, OK, we're back in business. <laughs> I have no idea what that was about. All right, and then uh, we can't store these here because the value, the type is different. So we need to put this on the deprecated info script instance extension deprecated native info free property list funk, and we'll do the same for free method list funk.
Um, I thought I changed the type of that, didn't I? Uh, let's go into script instance extension and take a look at that. I did. I did change the type. Oh, it's still complaining at me. Oh, I forgot to change the type in here. That's why it's complaining. Okay, so we're now constructing the version 3 struct. Okay. Um, so that should be good, I think. And then we need uh, to set this up for here. Let's, I guess, clear this out. It's going to be more similar to this one. So we'll copy and paste this one. There are some differences, though. So this one uh, needed to do this thing with the notification func. We don't need to do that. Uh, which also means if up here we have notification func, that's no longer be null pointer. That is going to be p info notification func. All right, we'll have to test all of this. This is going to be a little wacky. We'll have to make sure that um, like GD extensions built for Godot four point one can use this code path, Jeet extensions built for Godot 4.2 can use this code path, and then new ones uh, that are aware of the latest version of this struct will, will use this code path, and then everything works, I hope. All right, so now I think we're getting the data registered and in all the right places. Now we need to make Godot actually use the new data that we've given it and the old data. It'll need to know when it uh, has to fall back. So free property list. Um, so if free property list func, we then pass in the p count. But if it doesn't exist, because it won't on the compatibility ones, we need to say if deprecated native info free property list func then instead we call that deprecated native info free property list func and here we don't pass in the count because that wasn't available then what are you complaining about i don't understand uh, point of to a name instead of to a pointer type. I think that's old. VS Code's just gotten stuck somehow. Huh. Let's hope it snaps out of it. I really don't want to have to restart VS Code again. All right, next one is get method list. Here, hey, too many arguments. That should be the exact right number of arguments. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Let's go look at GD extension interface H version three of the struct. Should have free method list two, free method list two. Oh, did I forget to, to actually change it? Uh, free method list two, yep. I forgot to add the new argument which is going to be u int 32 t p count. There we go. All right, so now that should be the right number of arguments, but VS Code is just not figuring it out for some reason. I don't know why. Else if deprecated, my autocomplete is gone again. What is going on with you, VS Code? Does anyone have any ideas like how we can figure out what's going on with VS Code? There's an update. OK. There's nothing spinning or 
doing anything. It's just decided to stop auto-completing and understanding my code and everything. Huh. Well, let's kill it again. If it happens one more time, I think I might just leave it be until after the stream and I can try and debug it some more. Deprecated native info. So now I got my autocomplete again. Uh, free methodless funk. Oop. Jeez. Deprecated native info. Get rid of account. Hey, Cyber Habanero! Welcome to the stream! You come wearing a crown. I suppose that makes you... Sir Habanero? Or not Sir, that's Knights. Uh, 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 Lord Habanero? Is VS Code already stuck again? Jeez, it is. Ooh, here's a thing spinning now. There's something spinning. Parsing workspace. Hmm. Interesting. How how much work is this is this parsing workspace gonna take? Hmm. Anyway. We'll just deal with it. We'll just deal with it for now. Uh, this actually should be enough code to make this whole thing work. Let's try uh, uh, building a dough and see what happens. While we're waiting for it to build, uh, I'm also going to take a look at the diff, make sure we didn't do anything weird. All right. This seems right. This seems right. This also looks good. Yeah. Assuming this compiles, I think that is all the changes. Uh, the next step will be... Um, we'll want to test... Um, we want to test uh, binary compatibility with an older GD extension. And then we'll want to update uh, Godot CPP to be able to handle the, uh, the new stuff. But I could probably push this as a draft, like make a draft PR, uh, just so that I can you know, tell Remy and a thousand ships, uh, like, hey, this is the changes that I had in mind, um, and explain why. Uh, since it will take a little bit to figure out how we're going to merge my changes with a thousand ships changes anyway. Uh, so this we'll call it GD extension script free lists. It's as good as anything. I've already looked at the diff. And A will say um, pass count to free method list. No, I don't want to write it like that. Pass count GD extension, pass count to uh, functions to free method and property lists for script instances. Man, that's long. Um, pass count to functions to free property method and property lists for script instances. Can I make that shorter? Um, pass count when? Count when freeing method and property list for script instances. 
<laughs> Can you use dark mode, please? This comes up like almost every stream. First of all, Tech Ops, welcome to the stream. Thank you for coming. Uh, I, I prefer light mode. It's better for my eyes. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like it. Um, but it works better for me. Uh, I guess I could conceivably use a dark mode. Actually, I'm not even entirely sure. Do I just change the theme to one that's dark? Dark Visual Studio C++. Dark plus default dark. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. We'll we'll give it a try. But uh this is considerably more difficult for me to see. <laughs> I wonder if this is like a uh an age thing. Like because I have old man eyes. They're like no, I think it's just a personal preference thing. People are different. But um yeah, I don't know. Anyway, let's uh See if we got any errors. We did. Okay. Uh, yeah. Where is that? Did it actually take me there? Why do we need to do that? Why do we need to const cast it? Oh, cause it, okay. I yeah. Cool. Is there such a thing as high contrast dark mode, I wonder? Hmm. I guess that would just be a different theme that aims to be both dark and high contrast. I have a lot of themes, man. Let's try some other ones. That doesn't actually look any different. Um, Kimby. Ooh, wow. That's interesting. Warmer, but still, like, I don't know if you guys have this, but, like, it just seems like the pixels are squished and, like, the lines are thinner when it's dark. To me, it's just harder to read. Oh, cool. It actually changes when I go over it. I like that. This is maybe less so than the other ones. But like these reds, man, like I can, it's so hard to see red on black. Um, hmm. Trying this for you, Tech Ops. Trying it for you. I don't like it, but I'm trying it. Okay, let's, uh, let's rebuild here. Yeah, we have this weird situation where we sometimes have to actually free this struct, uh, but we still store it as a const struct uh, in those cases. One of these weird uh, things we do for for backward compatibility. We probably could actually wrap this in a if in def um, disable deprecated, and actually. For the notification one, we also wrapped that one in it. Hang on, how much are we doing for the deprecated stuff? <laughs> we could make this struct entirely not exist and the free native info thing not exist if we're uh, disabling deprecated code. Def disable deprecated. Oops, I cannot spell deprecated. Uh, which is going to cause some errors because we didn't account for that originally. Uh, where did we add this new stuff? So this would be deprecated. Around this one, we can also say if in def disable deprecate, deprecated. <laughs> 
and if sable duplicated. Darker was better. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess like the colors here are a little weird because we get this purple, but like I just, this red is a disaster. Putting red on black should not be done. Uh, and where was the other one? Oh, this one did it differently with the formatting. Maybe I'll do it that way. Did it. Uh, so this was still here. And then this was out here. I don't know if Clang format will like that better. Deprecated native info. Native info. This one will have to do the same way. If in def, deprecated, or disable deprecated. All right, I think that looks good. But yeah, I like this. We're, we'll make it so that this this whole struct and the whole idea of having to free this native pointer, ooh, and we'll have to do that. This bit uh, will never, ever even happen if uh, deprecated code is disabled. I just noticed I typoed above. Deprecated. Deprecated. I'm going to need to double check this one more time to make sure I didn't typo that all over the place. Um, deprecated. Disable. Deprecated. Disable. Deprecated. Disabled. Deprecated. Disabled. Deprecated. Deprecated. All right. I think I've got it. Um, we should actually find out, or no, we won't find out. We'll actually, we'll have to, we'll actually have to compile it with disable deprecated to see if that was correct. Uh, we'll do that second. It's compiled as normal. G extension script instance create three void const defined but not used. Oh, because we have to register it. We have to register that function. Okay, we missed a step. Let's go to G extension interface CBP. And we need to find where we're registering all these functions down here. And script instance create. Let's move this one up here. Register a new one, script instance three. Okay, there we go. First thing I do as soon as I'm off the stream is I'm going back to a light a light theme. Yeah, TechOps saying still learning C++ at uni, which I, I assume means that you are considerably younger than me. So I wonder if there is some some age thing in this, like uh, that I have old man eyeballs. And so my, or maybe I just need glasses. I don't know. <laughs> I probably do. But I feel like I need to shine just just more light in there to be able to see anything. All right, uh, so that built, let's uh, try something. Should we try, can we download uh, a build of the Luau bindings? I've never used them. Um, but the question will be, can it, we'll need to actually make an instance, right? Hopefully we can get some tutorial code. 
Um, so we can just copy and paste something in here. Let's see. Documentation. Boom, 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 boom. Building an installation. Yeah, we don't need that because we're downloading the thing. Class registration. Annotations. Defining a class. Uh, are essentially a special table created using GD class. Both the original table and the output of GD class are expected to be stored in locals. Annotations used for class registrations as class should be placed in the original table and not local store. Okay, so. This would define a class. And then how do we make an instance? Another option, if we can't figure this out, is to try my gravity script bindings. But um, like I don't actually do anything in uh, like the property list method. Can I just give me an example? Give me an example. As this project is still in early stages, you shouldn't consider this syntax interface stable yet. The following class provides an example as to what is considered currently considered idiomatic and type checkable. Okay, so this defines a class, but it doesn't create an instance of it anywhere. Hmm. <laughs> You're just all doing everything with black, Cyber Habanero, wear black, look at black, painted your your walls black. Living in a, a a a black programmer void. Yeah, I would like to test the binary compatibility thing, but I don't know that I have a good way to do it. Um, what other bindings are there? Uh, there is, say, Godot Python bindings. There's a couple of those. I think we want Tulemans probably. I know that Mai's version makes them work more like GD extensions and less like scripts. Um, but is there an easy download? There isn't. We'd probably have to build it. Um, does anyone know any good GD extension script bindings to try? I know Ricardo's got got Julia bindings. Ricardo, can I download your your Julia bindings? Or am I gonna have to build that? I actually don't know the link for your Julia bindings. <laughs> or D, I don't know D. I don't know Julia either. But I figure if we have Ricardo here, uh, we can. Uh, oh, Swift. Yeah, Swift is not done as a scripting language. But welcome, twenty fifth. Welcome to the stream. So there's there's um two ways to do GD extension bindings. One is where you uh, work more like a module, like a Godot module, and you're registering classes in ClassDB. And uh, that's the way that the Rust bindings work, Godot CPP works, the Swift bindings. But then there's another way to do it where you add a scripting language to Godot, which is how like the Luau bindings work. Uh, I'm assuming Ricardo's uh, Julia bindings um, the GD extension version is not up yet. Ah! <laughs> Julia, the programming language, Cyber Habanero. The Julia programming language. It is fast. It is composable. It is dynamic. It is general. It is reproducible. It is open source. 
It looks pretty cool, actually. I spent a bunch of time reading about it uh, around when I started working on the Gravity Script bindings because I was trying to think, like, I need a project to work on with the script interface stuff so that I could learn how it works better and be able to help people with their problems and understand their PRs and their issues better. And at one point I was like, I should just take Ricardo's Julia bindings and mess with those, but they weren't available. And I guess they still aren't available at the moment. At the moment. <laughs> Is there is there a Ruby a Ruby Godot binding? That'd be interesting. Godot Ruby. Ruby language binding for Godot. The thing is we need to pick a programming language that I or somebody here can help me write the code for. I don't know Ruby. Um and I guess I know I know Lua, but like I I'm not sure I understand the explanation here enough that I would like be able to create an instance of a class. Lua doesn't really have classes. So it's a little a little confusing. Um I guess this is yeah how they're defining a class. Then I guess I'd need to make another class that uses this class somehow. But I don't know how to do that exactly. I suppose I could define the class in Lua and then instance it in GDScript. That would test this, right? I think. Uh, okay. Um, we, we built our version of Godot. Let's start a Godot project. Um, uh, I guess, yeah, let's just launch so, oh, typing the path slightly wrong here. So, bin go makes PST whatever. x86. All right, and we're going to make a new project. Put it in here. I'm going to call it Luau test. Compatibility renderer sounds great. Create folder. All right. Do you save your VODs so I can watch these later? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, I am multi streaming to uh, Facebook, Steam, Twitch, YouTube. Uh, I don't stream to Twitter anymore because I, I've left Twitter. Uh, I think that's all of them, but uh, the YouTube ones, uh, the YouTube ones are there forever. So, yeah, Swift seems really cool. Miguel de Acasa is the one working on the uh, Swift bindings for Godot, uh, which is really cool. Um, Miguel de Acasa is like a, a, a old open source hero of mine. He's the uh, uh, original, one of the original creators of GNOME and the Mono project. Uh, so it's really cool that like he's super involved in, in Godot stuff, and in particular, GD extension stuff. Uh, yeah, I had the opportunity to, to chat with him a bit at GodotCon um, at this last one. Uh, he gave a presentation on Godot Swift. And Swift seems really cool. Swift seems like a very interesting programming language. I haven't had a chance to do anything with it yet. There's just too many things, guys. There's too many cool things and technologies and stuff to try in the world. How does anyone have time to do anything at all. Um, all right, so I think I did download this build of the Luau bindings. Or I did not. Um, Linux, oh, it's just called Linux x86. That's a horrible name for a zip file. But yeah, I guess I probably have that Linux x86 or x64 uh let's go to our luau test i vaguely recall a thing about godot getting a terminal doc did that ever happen did that ever get merged that'd be really nice right now 
I guess uh, here's what I'll do. I'll start a scene and I'll attach a script and then that will automatically open up this terrible dark themed VS code that I'm never going to use again. <laughs> And I've named this file node 2D also brilliant. Let's name the scene node 2D also now. Uh, let's 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 roll some of this back here. Um, we're going to detach this script. We're going to rename this main and we're going to save it. And then we're going to attach a script, which is going to be called main GD. And then we can get rid of this node 2D GD. Um, okay. So we need to install the uh, Luau bindings, so let's do unzip l linux x86. All right. Um, this is fine as far as a hierarchy goes for now, given that this is just a test project. I'd maybe rearrange it a little bit uh, if I were doing a real project, but I think that's fine. Uh, now we are going to can't open, failed to load resource, make sure resources. Interesting. Um, let's reload this project, see what happens. It could be a problem because loading a GD extension uh, sometimes requires restarting the editor. Can't open dynamic library. Uh, let's exit out of here. Let's launch Godot in a terminal where we can see what's happening. Uh, default Godot 4, bin Godot Linux x86 editor dev editor. All right, we got some red. Can't open dynamic library. <laughs> uh, okay, they built it on a newer version of uh, or a, a Linux distro that has a newer version of libcxx, which sucks. There's a couple of ways around that problem. One is just to use a very, very old distro for compiling uh, your Linux builds, which I think is the approach that Godot itself uses. Uh, the other is that you can statically link uh, glib CXX um, in, but that isn't ideal either, um, but definitely one solution. Okay, so I think, should we build this? How hard is it gonna be? Um, building an installation. Building yourself uses Sconstruct. That's nice. Ooh, it might use git submodules, which I hate as a developer, but love as a user. Because <laughs> it's going to make our setup nothing here. It's going to be great. Um, or wait, here, this is fine to do it here. Let's go to CD, pure J, default. Oh, oh yeah, that's right, because I already have it checked out. Uh, Luau script, uh, git pull upstream master. I don't have an upstream, git pull. There we go. Um, oh, and let's do git sub module init recursive in case I didn't do that when I first checked this out. What did I do wrong here? Submodule uh, update init recursive. There we go. All right, it checked out all of the things, including the Luau source itself. Let's build it and see what happens. So I asked this earlier, but I don't know if the people who are on now are the people who were here earlier, but is anyone going to GDC in two weeks? Going to be uh, rocking the, the Godot booth all week. It's going to be awesome. It was super awesome last year. Um, ooh, it finished. What do we got? What do we got? Do we have to do anything to package it? doesn't say. <laughs> Let's just look and see what we got. Is it all in the bin directory? All right. All right. Let's um, 
Let's go here. We'll delete the bin directory that we made before. And we're going to copy in um, Godolu Owl script bin. Let's take a look at what we've got. We've got just this Linux build and then some cruft uh, for macOS. Condition, file not found, dynamic library, file not found. Okay, that seems like it's an issue in the uh, .gd extension file. We'll take a look at that. Windows or Linux debug x86 64 in the script. It seemed like it was there. Um, let's compare these paths. So, bin. Luau script, lib luau dash script dot linux dot editor. Okay, so it wants us to do a specific editor build. Uh, that's interesting. That was not in the docs, but we can do that. That's cool. Editor. I'm actually very interested to try this. It, it's it'll be good to have another. Um, GD extension that I can use for testing when we make changes to GD extension itself that we didn't break it. And I, I quite like uh, this project, even though I've never used it. I've spent so much time in their source code and I'm, I'm very, very grateful uh, for the work that they've done and, and made available so that I can uh, use it. So if we can not break them, that would be good. I would be all for that. All right, it opened without errors. That's a good sign. Let's, um, I guess, uh, just check that it seems to be working, which we can do by going to attach a script and see if we have Luau as an option. We do, we have Luau as an option. Um, but we don't actually want to attach it to a node because the plan that I had was that we were gonna use GDScript to actually instance the Luau class. So instead, what we're going to do uh, as soon as I figure out, I'm going to do what I just did again to figure out what extension it wants for Luau files. Um, probably Luau, but let's let's see. Lua, okay, just dot Lua. So we're going to come here and make a uh, my class dot Lua because I think that's what they called the example that they gave us, my class. Yeah. We're gonna copy this whole thing into here. And we're gonna go to our main and in our ready funk. Um, actually here, we'll, we'll do const uh, my class equals preload my class dot Lua. That should load the script. And then in here, we should be able to say, we'll call it MC my class, or actually we can do it this way. Uh, my class dot new. And then um, VS Code is being so weird right now, like it's stuck. It's stuck on this message. Unless that's just text? No, that's just stuck in there. Hmm. Something's messed up in VS Code. Uh, and then let's see what this method is called that it declares. Um, test method AST, which takes a number and a typed array of resources. Why a typed array of resources? It's pretty random. Um, so let's say MC test method AST. That's what it was called, right? Test method AST one, and I don't know if it's going to care about the type. 
that much, but let's make an array of resources that's empty. Uh, and I guess print the return value. All right, so in theory, uh, this code should work. And print one, two, three. You guys ready to try it? Non-existent function new on base Lua script. Uh, that's how you create instances, right? Or am I losing my mind? Script dot new, right? It's not init. That's what you name the function, but then it's dot new in, in real life, I think. Like if I were to make a GD script class. Yeah. So how's there if Lua script is a script, shouldn't new work? Uh I guess let's take a look at the code. Um I thought I still had Lua open somewhere. Looks like not. Okay, let's uh Oh, come on. This is great. Well, let's look at the bind methods. Bind methods. Not mind methods, bind methods. Nothing bound on this one. Lua script. I am so unbelievably confused. If this is a script, there should be a new method on it, right? Let's look at the docs. Or not? The new method of a script subclass creates a new instance. Object set script extends an existing object if that script class matches one of the script's base classes. I feel like new should just work. I'm so confused. Uh, well, let's. I didn't even think of doing this until I read it in the docs, but like, let's use set script and just see what happens. Um, okay, so this is going to be an object, and then we're going to say MC set script my class, and then we're going to try to call this method. Let's see if that works. The weirdest way to do this ever. And it works! Ha ha! Okay. Could not find element type from property hint of typed array. That's interesting. If we just get rid of this. Not that it matters. I just would like to not have that warning. Huh. What if we just do this? All right, well, I give up on, on uh, getting rid of that error, but it does seem to work. Uh, Lua's working, everything's good. Um, so I think our test for compatibility with Godot 4.2 is good, assuming that that's what Lua's using. Let's take a look at the extension api.json that they include. And yeah, it's based on Godot 4.2. So it looks like our Godot 4.2 compatibility code works. Uh, next, 
we need to uh, update Godot CPP to work with the new struct, which should be fairly simple. Um, send this new VS code here, Godot CPP. Make a new branch. Script free lists. Base the branch name on the one we used for Godot itself. And we're going to need to uh, copy in the changes we made to the GD extension interface.h. Take a look at those changes. I don't always take all of them. Um, register extension class three. Okay, that looks like that was maybe something that was done later. That's fine. The load help things, I'm doing that in a different PR. So I think. I think I'm only going to add some of these changes. We'll do git add p, we'll say yes to this change, yes to this change, yes to this change, yes. And we're going to say no. Yes, 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 no, no, no. OK. So I, I tend to when I'm working on Godot CPP stuff to have different PRs for each version or for each feature that we're adding to go to Godot CPP. Um, we could do it differently and just say like every once in a while we sync the GD extension interface in Godot CPP with the one in Godot, which would also work. And maybe we'll do like right before release or something if there's if we've acquired some sort of inconsistency or cruft or something. But otherwise, like we're almost always implementing features in Godot CPP before they're merged into Godot. And like these changes here, for example, are from the um, the documentation change that Rateo worked on to allow GD extensions to register documentation in the Godot editor, um, which has a whole separate PR for Godot CPP adding support for that. And uh, I yeah, I like to keep those things together. Not necessarily, you know, the only way to do it, but that's how I tend to do it. Oh, CyberHabanero asked a question that I didn't see. Cool. Can I use Java that way too? Is there a tutorial uh, how to include in Godot? And do I need Mono C++ for it? So if you're asking if there's a Java binding, yes. Uh, there is a general JVM binding, although I believe they've called it Godot Kotlin. But I, I don't think it's specific to Kotlin. Uh, I think any JVM language will work with this binding. Um, so if Java or Kotlin or the JVM is your thing, yes. Uh, I don't know if there's tutorials. Uh, you'll have to search for that. <laughs> and then Mono C++, I don't know exactly what you're asking there, Cyber Habanero. I mean, if you download the build, uh, you don't need to have C++ or anything around. Um, like you don't need to have a C++ compiler uh, to build it, you just download, you know, whatever zip file they make and, and drop it in your project. Uh, yeah, so where the heck were we? We were on Godot CPP. Uh, we got the GD extension interface. Um, we might actually not need to do anything here. This is interesting. Um, because I have a change somewhere, uh, a PR that was in the works to add like a nice abstraction for using a script interface or a script instance, but I, I don't think I ever finished that. I don't think it's merged. I don't think there's anything in Godot CPP itself right now that uses this struct. Um, so how will we test it? I guess we could test it by modifying the Luau bindings, because we already built it. 
Um, yeah, first of all, let me just verify that there's nothing in this uh, in Godot CPP that's specifically using it. Yeah, okay, cool. I should finish up my change that adds a, a friendly interface <laughs> for working with this struct, uh, because otherwise uh, GD extensions that add scripting languages have to roll their own thing. And like I have one in my gravity script. Sorry for all the yawning. My gravity script GD extension and the Luau uh, bindings have their own also abstraction for it to make it easier to work with. So I should try and get that. I should try and get that uh, finished up. Anyway, for now, let's change direction a little bit here. So um, let's find where they have the extension or no GD extension interface. Interface dot H. All right, and let's copy our new one over that. Here, I don't care about how much of it I'm copying. We'll just copy the whole thing. Um, core extension, GD extension interface to this path. OK, and then we need to find um, script instance info and everywhere that it is using script instance info 2 we need to switch to using script instance info 3 we could probably do that with just a copy replace um, extension info 2 place it with script instance info 3 and do it yes replace all right and that's going to require us to change um, Uh, da, 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 da. We're going to need a free property list to change a bunch of stuff with that. No, we don't want to replace here. That's wacky. Just search. U int 32 T P count. P count. And yep, we'll have to change that one too. We'll get there. What is this one? All right. Int are you int thirty two T P count? This one will have count. We can get rid of this free with len thing here. Uh, what method is it using to free? Just memfree? All right. We can just memfree. DP list. And we can get rid of this. <laughs> the comment is don't ask. Um, and here we'll have p count. Uh, free property list. 32t. Wait, was it you in 32t or was it plain in 32t? And I typed 23. You know what? I, it really doesn't matter. The size. I could just switch to typing int for all the rest of these ones. But let me just double check this. So uh, extension interface. Uh, Free property list. It is uint. Good. That's the most sensible type for this particular situation. Okay. Free property list. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah. Okay. And let's also look for free method list. Modify that one as well. Uint 32t p count. P count. To T P count. Get rid of this one. P count. Free with len. We'll get 
mem3 list. That seems good. I don't know why VS Code is complaining about these things, but it seems fine. Um, new int 32t p count. And then uh, we need to get rid of the alloc with count stuff, alloc with len, and just do these. Ah, oh, jeez, come on. Um, so mem alloc size of gd extension property info times size. And this one, do the same thing. Mem alloc size of gd extension method info time size uh, and there's one more m alec this one's property info again size of gd extension property info time size Oh, I don't, know. I don't write C style allocations very often, so I guess I have to cast this. So I might have to do that in the other ones that I replaced too, but we'll find out. The compiler will tell us. Can't trust VS Code right now. Scones target equals editor. Let's rebuild. All right, so I'm assuming this is going to error, but then we should be able to fix the errors and test it out, and it should be using our new uh, struct. While we're waiting for this to compile, I can start working on the PR. Uh, did I not push this? I did not. All right. Uh, let's see if the building is finished. It has, and it has erred because I forgot to. Oh, this is different than what I was expecting. Cannot convert. Script instance info three to script instance info two. Oh, because we also need to change that it's using script instance create two. So let's do um, script instance create two. And we need to replace this with script instance create three. Place. All right. And then uh, the thing that I was expecting to happen is these ones. Um, was it not taking me there? Take me to this one. There we go. Yeah, so C style allocations, you always have to cast the pointer from, from malloc, or in this case, mem malloc, because that's the Godot version of, of malloc. It tracks memory usage, um, and I think maybe uses a different, um, like a custom managed heap for the memory as well. Oops, GD extension property info. Okay, that might be all in the right places. Let's see what happens. Uh, it's not a member of Godot internal. 
Oh, we do need some Godot CPP changes. Haha. -ha. Okay. So we don't have any code that actually uses the methods, but we do need to update Godot CPP to load the new methods. Um, because otherwise they won't be available. So is this the right one? No, it is not. This is the one. So uh where the heck are all these? I think they're in Godot HPP. Yes, they are. So we need to find script instance create two, and we need to add our new script instance create three. And in fact, we don't need two anymore. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Then the place that these are actually loaded, is that Godot CPP? Yes, it is. OK, so let's find script instance create. And I guess since we're replacing it, we don't need to um, copy it. Here's where we load it. OK. Um, Let's just compile this once to make sure there aren't any issues. And then we'll copy all of this over into, or actually maybe we'll just delete the Godot CPP that Luau has and uh, symlink to this version. And then it should use it. Let me in fact start doing that. So find name Godot CPP, extern. CPP, -N -S, PRJ, alt -O CPP to here, -O CPP, bam. Okay, so that should be already once we verify that this is all good and it looks all good. Um, scans target equals editor. And since I think this is good, I'm going to actually commit this. Commit. Um, load uh, with script instance create three function. Load new GD, GD extension interface function. Yep, yeah, that seems like a good message. Let's jump back over here. We're still getting some errors. Int get arguments. Right from here. Format T expects argument of type int, but argument has four types. I wonder if there's more changes to um to Godot CPP that the Lua bindings aren't ready for. Hmm. I remember seeing something in the Luau docs under building that said, generate Luau bindings equals yes. Let's just try this and see if it um, fixes our issue. So I'll add that to the command line. I wonder if it needs to like regenerate the bindings or something like that and it didn't do it automatically. Interesting. It's saying everything's up to date, although we know it didn't build correctly. Uh, let's let's clean and then try building again. Work on the PR in the meantime. 
Um, currently, the uh, let's say free property list and uh, free method list function uh, functions on cd extension script instance info two don't accept the number of items in the list since the uh, GD extension probably allocated memory for each item in the list, it will need to loop over all the elements in the list in order to free that memory. In order to work around this, uh, all existing GD extensions that provide scripting languages uh, do some sort of hack to save the list count, save list count. For example, the Luau bindings. Um, allocate uh, the list with some extra room at the front to stash the count and then do some pointer math. You can include a link here. YouTube, Discord, and Twitch, all at once in chat. Also Facebook. Um, I don't think it's connected with uh, any with the chat on Steam, but yeah. And when we had uh, when I still did Twitter uh, streaming, which I don't because I just left Twitter. <laughs> uh, I think you could also comment there and it would also appear in the chat. Yeah, restream's pretty amazing. Anyway, Ari Lin, welcome to the stream. Thank you for joining. Uh, we need to find a link to this. Alloc with size, is that what it was called? Alloc something? Alloc with len? So we can make a, a link here. Uh, alternatives include uh, saving a hash a hash map uh, include um, using a hash map to uh, 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 how to say this non verbosely alternatives include um, to save the count associated with the uh, list pointer. In any case, um, none of these hacks or workarounds would be necessary if Godot simply passed the count to the free property list and free method list functions, which is what this PR um, what, what this PR does. All right, that sounds good. Uh, because a thousand chips is related to this, I'm gonna add her specifically. G extension core seems good. Labels enhancement. GD extension core. Milestone 4.3. A scripting language, I'm sorry. 
just checking my chatty app and saw people currently streaming and there you were <laughs> well welcome thanks for coming unfortunately the stream's actually coming to an end in a couple of minutes uh but it, it was great that you stopped by Okay. I'll put a little note. Um, in addition to these changes, I also um, wrapped uh, more of the code to support deprecated um, structs in script instance extension with if in def disable deprecated to make um, builds with uh, to make builds with uh, without deprecated code a little lighter. All right, I think that sounds good. I'm just going to quick look for some typos. Loop over all the elements in the list in order to free that memory. To work around this, all existing GD extensions that provide a scripting language do some sort of hack to save a list count. For example, the Luau bindings allocate the list with some extra room at the front to stash the count and then do some pointer math. Terms include using a hash map to save the count associated with the list pointer. In any case, none of these hacks or workarounds would be necessary if could have simply pass the count to free property list and free method list functions, which is what this PR does. I'm wondering if I should just not mention the hash map thing. I feel like that's just superfluous. Like, yes, people can do other kinds of hacks. But this is a nice example because it's a terrible hack. <laughs> uh, I don't like that this includes a specific hash, but I guess it's fine. All right, so did our stuff finish compiling? It did. It seems to have succeeded without errors. That means we can go over to wherever the heck we were when we copied this. I think that might have been in here. Yes, so we can copy again. Ooh, and of course, that crashed Godot for some reason, but that's fine. Apps don't generally like when you replace uh, shared objects they're using underneath them. But we can always run Godot again and see if it works. No, it does not work. <laughs> uh, or no, no, what? It seemed like it crashed, but it's still here. Is this an old one? Hang on, let's close this. Did it crash or did it load? Okay, it loaded. I don't know why I thought it crashed. It did not crash. Everything seems good. Let's run it. One, two, three. Let me just verify that we are using the newly built one. Just look in here, uh, not there, find bin, dash L. This and the editor one, 1059. Yeah, that's the new build. Seems to work. Seems to work. Um, all right, let's make this. Let's make this PR. And let's go tell uh, a thousand chips on that other PR that I made it. Where did I leave that? Here it is. So Remy and a thousand chips. Um, here's a here's a PR with the change I had in mind. And I guess we can make the Godot CPP PR as well. What is this game? This is not a game. Welcome, uh, Abo. We are uh, hacking on Godot itself. 
I'm one of the maintainers of GD Extension in Godot, and uh, yeah, we're we're working on GD Extension. <laughs> we're working on a feature of Godot. Um, sometimes I do work on games on my streams. Increasingly, I seem to just be working on Godot, but uh, maybe next time we'll try to get back to actually working on a game. I'm really dying to go back to working on my VR um, plane flying game, the the kind of arcade Galaga VR game that I uh, was working on. But uh, yeah, right now we are we are building Godot. Success without errors, 225 problems. Yeah, the thing is, VS Code includes spelling mistakes as problems. And when we're using the Godot source code, there are some spelling mistakes in there. So yeah, the, you, you kind of have to not look at the problems. <laughs> we're just looking for compiler errors is what we're looking for. Um, so what was I saying? Let's make the, the, um, Godot CPP change as well. Say GitHub Godot CPP. This, um, depends on uh, this Godot PR. Keeping as a draft until that PR is merged. So this would be enhancement. And we won't need to set a milestone. Or no, yeah, let's set a milestone. It helps we keep track of the difference between PRs for Godot 3 and Godot 4. Um, yeah, seems good. And we'll convert it to a draft. All right. I'm kind of surprised that that took so long to do. That took the whole two hours of the stream in order to uh, make this PR, given how simple it was. I suppose some of that is uh, related to uh, just when I do things on stream, I get dumber. Uh, and also, you know, hanging out with you guys and talking and whatever and uh, doing things a little bit more lackadaisically. But I'm happy that we got it done. Uh, so. Now this PR exists, so it's no longer blocking uh, a 1,000 ships PR. Uh, and it would be great to get both of these things merged for Godot 4.3, so Godot 4.3 can be the most awesome Godot release ever made. Um, which, yeah, like I was saying earlier on in the stream, there's some really cool stuff coming in Godot 4.3. Uh, this is a super minor thing, but everyone must do the things, minor or not minor. It's all just the work. Are you one of the developers who make Godot? I am one of the developers who work on Godot. Um, definitely, like, I've only been a Godot uh, maintainer for four-ish years. Um, and the amount of Godot that I'm involved in has been slowly expanding over that period of time. My original contributions, like Cyber Habanero uh, says, were related to uh, WebXR. That was my first major contribution to Godot, and then I just did little things around there. Uh, I've increasingly gotten more and more involved in XR. I'm on the XR team, and then also increasingly more and more involved in GD extension. I'm on the GD extension team. Um, I also contribute to random little stuff as it becomes important to me personally. Uh, for example, the uh, support for light maps in uh, Godot 4.3 for the uh, OpenGL renderer, for the compatibility renderer, uh, I did at least 50% of that work. <laughs> uh, I did the bit that allows it to actually render light maps in OpenGL. Um, Clay and Dario did the bit for actually baking light maps when running in the OpenGL renderer. Uh, so I only did the one half. Um, and I based the code heavily on code that uh, uh, Clay and them had written for the, the Vulkan renderer. So like, I'm not that good at rendering. I, but the point is that I do work on some other stuff that aren't related to XR and aren't related to GD extension. So yeah, I am a very minor little maintainer off in the corner over here somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I do what I do. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that is all the time we have. I have to uh, go for a walk, eat some lunch, and then do a work meeting. 
uh, is what I've got up next. So I've got to I've got to get off this stream. But thanks everyone for coming. It was great to be back to streaming after not having done it for a month. I will try to do another stream next week Friday, uh, and maybe yeah, maybe we'll switch to doing um, some actual game development instead of just work on Godot because uh, that is fun, and I need to get back to it. I, I it's so easy for me to just get wow like tied up in working on Godot itself and not spending enough time actually using Godot.